Hello, everyone. So, how are we? So, from Tuesday, doing a bit of wood turning. Now we're back in the hand tool room. So, weather's a bit cooler. So, let's get you back out in that workshop. A few minutes back, we did nice little small box. One of the major star things that I, I, I've never forgotten using shooting board. Okay, so if you've been watching regularly some of my hand tool stuff, regularly use a shooting board. Why? What's it allow me to do? Shoot the end grain or even down the side grain, get things to fit, take a minute amount off. If you think about that kind of scenario, you do it on a table saw and you want to take off that. It doesn't happen, does it? You take off too much or not enough. You don't get a straight, uh, nice straight cut. You get something that deviates off a little bit. You might want to just take that, that little shim. So the difference between does and doesn't fit or being square, not square, can make all the difference. So my little box is a perfect example because the lid we can take off. If it wasn't square, I wouldn't be able to turn it around, put it back on. Simple thing like that can make all the difference. So even when I was at college, we had shooting board. Always there, shoot the end of it. Everything that I did, so the little box thing, prime example, as we've said, we have that halving joint that we've got here, two boards. They come together. But to do those two parts, I shot all the ends first to get them exactly square. They come together nicely. So important, okay? So, with that in mind, over the last, I don't know, six months we've worked on a shooting board, we also did the other thing we've got under here, which is the scary sharpening board. Now, we're going to start with the scary sharpening board because actually I need to sharpen the hand plane to use on the shooting board. So it's going to give you that whole thing of it. It's so important. So a scary sharpening board, piece of formalic, some rubber feet, okay? A few guys have said, why put rubber feet on it? You could turn it over. You could use a course or a brazier if we wanted something that was non-slip. Now, I'm just going to stretch up and take the camera back just a little bit. Out of the way, look, okay? So you can see a little bit more. So our formalic board we've got there. First thing I need to do, we're going to get some abrasive from there. So Ben, probably main camera again. Now, Ben's sat in here doing your camera work and computer again, guys. So if you get questions, you can shout them out at him and let me know. Even if you want things that we did on Tuesday with that uh, late maintenance session. And thanks for all your nice comments on there. It's great to sit down the next morning when I come in and read through the chat and everything else that's going on. It's quite, um, makes it feel worthwhile. That sound odd? Okay, 1,200 grit. So what we just cut is um, Hermes film back to Brazer, 1,200. This side, I've got 2,500. I was going to try and show you it, but I've cut a bit off without the number. The higher the number, the finer the grade. Nice and soft as easy if this, so it'll bond down easily. That's good. can use the backing paper just to make sure we've got no bubbles. That seems good. So I got the board on. Yeah, let's just see if we can bring it back. Because I know when we get to the shooting board, we're going to have to come back a bit. Next thing I'm going to do, and Ben, I expect might work camera too. Let's have a look. I'm just going to move my glasses. I need a little bit of paper towel, which I've got behind me. Water bottle. Okay. I'm going to clean the bench. And this is so weird. We said on Tuesday with the lathe maintenance session, dust can be a real problem for belt slip. Exactly the same on this. These full rubber feet will act as a non-slip surface perfectly as long as the bench is clean and dust-free. Okay? Simple as that. I'm just playing around now, just looking at the overhead camera shot I get, so you can see where we are. Let's lose the rubbish off the bench a minute. I'm just going to get the hand plane. So you could use whatever you like. We're going to go through a couple of planes with you, I think, with this. Let's go to a five. All right, so I'm just bringing the number five back in. I'm going to strip this down. I need to sharpen this one. I've sharpened a few of the planes, but this was a real good opportunity today just to have a quick sharpen up session. Uh, plane screwdriver. Oh, we did that as a video. So if you want to see how we made that, that was a few months back. Honing guide. I'm going to go with Veritas one. I have got just over two inch wide as a blade. So there's a scale on the front here where I'm looking. That says two. I want a 30 degree sharpened edge, so I've got to put my glasses on now, check on everything's right. Yellow dot in the middle, 30 on the scale on here. Can turn it over, slide my hand through. Done quite a lot of sharpening with most of you. People go, why do you use a honing guide? 
it's quicker, easier, takes the guesswork out. Um, I learned to freehand sharpen. I don't know if I'd be any good now. Okay, so I've locked that up, take that off, gives me my projection. Just going to do one here 12, 2, 5, so I can remember. Next, I want something as a lubricant. I use something called Homebright, which is a mixture and water base. That sounds odd, doesn't it? It all has a anti corrosive thing in. We get a tin, you can mix it. Finger and thumbs, say so thumbs underneath, fingertips on the top, go to there. You don't need to do loads on this. Back forwards. Check I've got a little bit of a bear appearing. Do a little bit. But this is the fundamental part of probably anything tool-wise. We need things sharp. All right, move a few things over. Just going to pull the board around a bit. I know where that's better. I'm looking on the overhead there. That was it. You can see what we're taking off as a residue at the top here. You can see the dark colour. Fingertip now, playing with, I might get in a bear on the back. That feels pretty good. Probably going to lose me a little bit. I'm going to go down to here, Ben. Probably two. I've just got it level with the bench at the moment, so I can do the back edge. Just enough clearance on there with that holding guide coming to there. So we sharpened our five. So there, let's bring our board back in just going to wiggle things about let us strut checking where things are to there i'm going to put a little bit of compound so a bit of paste to polish that up i start low gently bring it up i'm watching the air gap if you like on the front of the blade we can do back as well but things need to be sharp. So that scary sharpening board, really good for that. Those rubber feet stop it sliding. Wish it was the same on my leather strap. I'd probably put a bit of water on there. would be good. Get that back. Going to do something I'm not allowed to do now. Let's just see if it's pretty sharp. That's not too bad. Trim a few hairs on my hand. Okay. So the scary sharpening board really became, if you like, the inspiration for where we're heading now, the shooting board. Okay, just gonna tighten this blade back up, set the plane up. We're back about a millimeter off the front with the chip breaker, turn it over, we've got our blade. Plane wise, just gonna slide the board forward because I can sit the front of the plane on there so it's not resting on the bench. Level things out. Chip breaker on the top and the cap iron goes on. Gently tighten up. Not too much weight behind that at the moment. Next thing, we want to set things up. Now, we seem to be ejecting through, so we're going to wind that back. Just checking what's happening on here now, okay? So we're just trying to set the plane up. This is weird things to do. Um, this is something I learned from Deneb, who works for uh, Lion Nielsen Tools. And a little block. Test it. Cutting this side, not the other. That makes it easier before you go into your job. Hitting it really hard. Now, still cutting one side more than the other. Come around, move your lever. That's better. Got a fluff shaving that's caught in under there. Let's move that carefully. Got to wind it forward a bit. Now, before you go into your, your job, this is allowing you to set it up to get that nice cut and figure out where things are cutting. Tiny bit. That's better. Just going to pinch that brass knob, tighten that up. Okay. So we've got our scary sharpening board. Just going to put it out of the way because obviously you've got that bit of damp on it. Might need it again, but hopefully not. So today's session is all about what is in this box. Why the sharpening station? So again, this is something where a group of us here worked together and kind of gone, could we make an on-the-shelf basic type of shooting board? Some of you are going to kind of go, I could make my own. Fine. This is about giving you accuracy and something that will last. That's probably more durable. So what do we get in here? Instruction sheet. You won't need that by the end of this. So, okay. I'll put that there. Piece of wood. This has got a couple of aluminium or stainless steel knobs on these. I thought they're alloy, but they're not. They're stainless. I can feel it now. They won't rust. That's good. So I can undo them. 
Underneath here, have two T bolts, piece of wood. Okay, gonna lay them on the bench. Got to pick this out here. So we've got these two holes in the middle. We can move our box for a minute, put them right out the way. Basic board then has got two holes. Sorry, Ben. All right in the centre, have a slot holes over end. A couple of screw holes down here. More slots. All right, let's have a look just on the overhead. And I'm going to bounce you back a little bit. You can see most of it. All right, so I can try and explain all the features. We have a slot in here. Our piece of timber is machined, sort of fit into here. This becomes your back fence to stop the breakout. It can also go this end. Why? Because some of you are left-handed, so we can turn it round. So you've got a right and left-handed version. So you can go there with your plane, or if you're right-handed, you're going to be down there. Okay, that's good. Holes in here, you've got two screw holes. Right, let's bring them up a little bit. Countersunk, they are so you could screw a batten underneath if you want. Hold it in your vice. So you've got a way of gripping it if you want to put it in a vice. Two holes in the middle. We'll get to later, but they will fit the path type board I've got next to me. We're going to use them. We're going to show you what they can do. So again, if you've got a path system, you can use the pins. Obviously, things are repeated at the other end. The whole board is one piece of thermalic, a hard, durable plastic. What difference does that make? Traditionally, I probably would have made a wooden shooting board. It's not as durable. If I drop it, it gets damp. Humidity, all those things change and move it so it makes it less accurate. This actually you could buy, sort of throw in the back of the van if you really want and go to the next job. It's actually going to last you. So on the side here, we have a drop from top to bottom. This is eight mil. There is a recess groove to allow the dust to collect and get out the way. That's all been fought out nicely. Underside, rubber feet, non slip. There are six. Okay, recess point for those T-bolts to go through. We're going to put it together in a minute. So all those little things are done. Everything's nice and clean and countersunk. We said to you about the dust thing. Same thing applies with this. So I can spray the bench. Shouldn't need to too much, but wipe it over. Important thing to do. People kind of go, why, why do you want to clean? Okay, so done that. Now I'm going to be right-handed, so I'm there. I'm thinking which end I want to put it together. Our two bolts down in there. That one in there. I'm going to just flip it over. I can, even if I hold them, just lay that down. Got our piece of timber, our backstop. Just have a feel what we got. This is a piece of tulip on these. It will drop in. Hopefully, fit in that groove. I can position it. Put a bolt on. And put those little stainless steel caps on the top. Pulling them up just to make sure everything locates. Now, then I think if you have a look at camera two... That gives you a nice shot there. Just tightening these up, pulling that T-nut, just seeing where it is, pushing it up from underneath. That's good. Gives you a position to backstop. I want to get that set up. Our well, groove on here, we've said is 8 mil. That will accommodate most planes that are going to have a thickness. This is where setting this up. It needs to be level with that side. Right. So it's not interfering. Don't want it too far forward. I'm exaggerating it, but this is showing you how much movement you now have on that. We can lock it off. Next thing we want to do, the scary shouting board. Got people going. But it's a bit thin. It might flex a little bit. Electric van, you know, digital. This is made from three-quarter inch thick hard formatic sheet. I don't know if you guys can probably carefully come up. There's your numbers. Okay. Makes it really durable. When we first looked at could we get away with half inch? And I went, no, it's not going to be thick enough. We need it to be substantial. Okay, currently at the moment then, put it on the bench. We clean the bench, Ben. Can you go man camera? Now, those rubber feet, as long as we clean stuff. There you go. No movement. So you don't have to actually fix it down with screws. Whatever. It will sit by itself. I don't think it's lovely. I wanted something that didn't move. Um, one of the guys who works upstairs came down with the rubber feet. I can remember trying them on a few other things. We have them on other products. And I went, they're fantastic. It says no slip. That means you don't need to have anything as a permanent fix. It's durable, removable. You don't have to have a vice. You can move it about. Next thing. We use this on Tuesday. Machine wax. So why do I want machine wax? I want things to glide. 
No, a little bit down on this slide edge. Put it on. Okay, don't need loads. I'll wax just out of the way. Just going to get another bit of paper towel. Clean bit. Want to buff this. This is going to create a non-slip surface. So everything will glide easily. Now, let me get the other thing that I've tried using. Traditionally, most of us... Oh, that was my finger now on there. That was all right. Okay, good. Might have used candle wax. Candle wax is great on the sole of a plane to help it glide across the timber. When we first looked at this, I tried using a candle wax on here. Doesn't work as well. But actually, as you push the plane across, it creates friction. It melts the wax. The wood dust accumulates and sticks to it. You get a build-up. So you want something that's, if you like, a polished surface, help it glide. All right. So next thing we've got our plane. We can set it on the side. Everything is accurately machined, so that will be nice and square in that plane. We can come down. Now, first few strikes, I need nothing on here because we will take a minute little layer off the top edge of where this groove is because the blade sticks out that little bit. It overhangs. I'm just turning things around. So, Ben, if you pop to camera two for me. You can see the blade position actually lower down got a little step we'll take a minute groove edge off the top of that step not all the way down so actually where the steel body section is on the plane here i bring it in a bit that runs on the bottom edge that's what's maintaining your straight so you can't use a rebate style plane on this board it's not going to work all right just going to bring us back to square then main camera in a second, I think. Let's just do a little an overhead for you, if you like. Right, you can see where we are on there. I'm just going to bring this in a little bit as well. Out the way. Okay, so I'll bring that in. Bring the board back. Looking at where I am on the bench for you, just to see what's happening there. Position of gripping things and everything else. Different people are going to want to grip this in other ways. I tend to try and put my hand on the top. But it depends on the type of plane. So I think, Ben, let's just go to main shot for me a minute. What have I got there? I'm my way, mate. Let me just do one last one. I'll come back and then we'll get your question, Ben. All right? I can see you've got your hand. I'm sorry. I'm not really ignoring you. I'm concentrating on planes. They're flying about. Come on, then. What have you got, mate? Oh, so question from um, Jim here. He's asking, is the shooting board sold by Axminster? Is it, sorry? Is it sold by Axminster? Something we designed and made. It is purely one of our products. So the Rider badge is our own badge name. It is something, let I say, a collaboration of two or three of us. So I've taken my shooting board and kind of, come here for my lit one. It helps it glide. Look at that. Okay? It's harder. It's durable. It's not going to move or warp and all those little things. It's going to last a lot longer. Um... And I've seen people vandalise my shooting boards in here, wooden ones we used four or four years ago, and kind of go, you know, you've broken it. All right? Well, you've deviated. So, at least for this, not a problem. The bit of wood is replaceable, okay? Most of you have got the uh, ability to machine up a piece of tulip wood, drill two holes, hopefully, in the, in the right place, and put a piece of timber on. So, you can easily make your own. Some of you might go, and if I bring this round just a little bit, Ben, we'll have a look on camera too. You've got your height wise of our step. I'm just trying to find the pencil, which is right there. I'll go with a bit of oak. Look, I've got the pencil there. Right, this step, look how much it comes up from the plane. Okay. If you wanted to make a higher piece, there are longer bolts you can get. They're in the metric uh, accessory kit we do. Okay. So they're metric. They will fit the same nuts. You could change it. You could have a higher piece of wood. Why do we do that size? what you're going to want. Most people are going to want a thinner board. You're not going to do stuff that's mega thick, but you never know. Okay, now, plane-wise, what can you have? I've got a five, a low-angle jack, 62, okay? Number four. So what I'm getting at, you can use a whole range of things, even a block plane, okay? So whatever plane you've got will fit onto this, which is also a nice way of thinking about it. it makes it more durable. 
Next thing, just going to go back a step. Let's move the planes out the bench. Why do you want a shooting board? Him a two, Ben. Please. Thanks, right. Good. Let me move my shooting board. Forget it. All right. We're down to here. How many of you gone right? I've got the end of it. All I've got to do is clean this up. Got to come across the end grain, try and push off. And if this thing, you deviate off a little bit. You wiggle the plane just a tiny bit too much. You've also got nothing to keep you square, up and down, or equal. You also chip out the back corner because there's nothing supported. So it becomes problematic. Um, I have a piece of furniture I made when I was at uni that has lots of little bare elm doors and drawer fronts. Everything was fitted with a shooting board. Um, when I was at college, we used to work to the tolerance of a cigarette paper. Around the edge to test it, get it to fit. That was your first day. Then you'd make the draw. Then from there, yeah, you might take a little bit more. Off. You'd have to shoot it in to get it spot on to fit that gap. So our shooting board can allow us actually to cut and grain, possibly even side grain. So another bit of chestnut we have here. I put it on there. Let's have a look. Now I need to get my glasses. They're there. I want to see what's happening. Now I think I might put it out of the way. Let's just move the board. You'll see what I'm aiming to do with you now. I want to see if we can show you this a little bit better. I'm hoping my board is just a little bit out of square on here. Let's see what happens. Not bad there. Let's test it that way. That's better. Now, on here, can you see this? All right, bring it in. Other way. I think I'll get used to this by now. I'm coming. Now, I can wiggle the square. All right. That's not flat. It's not square down through there. Now, we've all got that scenario. Then camera one, I think. Yeah. As I just said to you when we started, you want to cut a board nice and square and accurately. Oh, I've got a table saw, a mitre saw. They deviate off a little bit. The blade gets blunt. Doesn't cut nice and square. Yeah, been there. I've got those things. I want to get something spot on and trim it accurately. So... Let's go with what we've got then. So we've got our bit of chestnut. I'll lift up my bit of plywood because I want that out of the way. We'll bring our board back into play. Non-slip. Sticks on there. Put our board in. We'll go with that five. We set it up. We sharpened it. To grip-wise, I think then probably where you were. I'm going to go over the top here. I can put my finger and thumb down in here. Um, just have a look on three. I think if I bring you over a little bit there, I can bring you back just a second. All right, grip, finger and thumb there, or cross the top. I can slide through. So I bring my board up now. I know I need a little bit of cut. Going to find where we are. A bit more. So we're just adjusting now, bringing the blade up. Uh, I see where I'm hitting there. Let's just take the back edge up there. Oh, I love doing this. Look at this, look. Can you make that? So, the difference between something that might fit and won't fit is that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I don't know if you'll get this on the overhead. We'll have a look. I'll do a longer one in a minute. I'll gradually get longer. You've got a piece of lace, if you like. Little holes or the end grain pores, everything. You can slice across that end grain nice and cleanly. Not too much effort. I'm using fingertips. So we sharpened it. I mean, nice and easy to control. Okay. We can check. We're square. A lot better. I can hold it there. No wiggle. Okay. I'll put it back on the board. We want to see it in a minute. Do you think we have the backstop? Oh, I can't slide it on the bench. <laughs> back in here. Uh, the rubber feet gripped, okay? So that backstop there, stopping that breakout. Gradually, I might bash the corner of this. I can slide it along. I can cut a little bit off that backstop. So that's actually renewable, disposable, if you like. The most important thing with this is you keep the plane square on that corner. You don't go tilting here. All right? Two, Ben, please. All right? 
Don't go lifting the plane up and getting impatient. This is about almost fingertip control. I'm going through. Just work it. Okay. You also will get, I think if we can see it on there, cleaner finish than you will get off your table saw or anything else. It's slicing, it's cutting. Yeah, if we done. So a bit of chestnut, quite an easy one, isn't it? Okay. How about something a bit wilder? A bit of bare elm. Let me just put my board on there. Ben's got his arm up again. Come on, then, Ben, what have you got? Um, so a question from Cliff. He's asking, have you tried the Veritas shooting board plane? It's tricky to set up, Cliff. I'm not going to say it doesn't work. Um, they do a right and left. They do a really nice fence, which is a pivot point for position fence. That's fantastic. There is a board, but you've got to do all the woodwork and make the step and all that. So a bit tricky to do. It's also designed around their shooting board plane, which has a blade at an angle, which is a bit more specialist. Okay. Um, makes it a bit trickier. It depends, I suppose, some of us. Hey, how much do you want to spend on it? Those days? Yeah. Now, before we came on air, me and Ben were talking about I nearly or I nearly bought a shooting board in a plane six months ago. Okay. In reality, I sat on my phone and someone's outbid me. Right, I put another bid in. All right. You've been outbid. Okay. So there was a Stanley shooting board, plane and board. Wow. I've never seen one in the flesh. And there was one at a local auction. Tank. I'm going to get this. I'm going to... Um, I bottled out when it got to 600. Okay. That's pounds for you guys in the States. It's it, it nearly one to one, I know. Okay. Um, it went for 1,200 plus the 20% tax and 20% on top of that. So kind of... Serious money. You can spend quite a lot of money on something, and that's an old one, okay? So the Veritas one is fantastic. The fence thing, you've got to make your board and everything else. Something maybe, if this one works, I might look at trying to design our board that we could use with that fence. That would be a nice idea. So you've got the accumulation. The thing I love about this, that hard-wearing surface and the slip, okay? Less resistance than I can get off a piece of plywood or anything else. And the groove... The formalic is harder than a plywood, so everything will run along nicely, okay? So it's actually going to do and last longer. All right? If I told you I've been working on this for about five years, on and off, of different ideas of could we make, and then we started toying around with right and left hand, screw holes, okay? All those things were quite an important part of this. My bit of bare elm. that easy? And again, beautiful, clean finish. Can't get that off a table saw. That's that's non-sanded. That's almost a fit into the a light cleanup. You're done. Okay. So really good to have. I love having the effect. And again, those those little things we thought about. Some of you, I'm left-handed. Fine. Turn it around. Put it around the other way. Um, okay. I'm going for a different job now. I'm going somewhere. Okay. Take it with you. It's portable. I mean, how much setup do you want? Done. Makes it easy. Okay. So, some of you might want to do mitres. Now, depending on what you have as a mitre, I've got to take the back fence off. Let's fist this out. So, undo your two little stainless steel nubs. Lift off the board. Might get away with that. I'm going to take them out. Show you how quick and easy that is to strip down. Bit to there. Mitre fence we made up, and this is a hard cut piece of high density MDF. Has a couple of other uses, and that's one of the things I wanted. Didn't want it just being one thing. Has the same holes that I'll drag the board in a second. Let's move a few things down here, create a little bit of room for all those planes. Our backstop. Bring in the big orange board. Some of you might have something like a path system. So if you have a path table, your dog holes will line up with this. Got to find the hole. There it is. So you could use your shooting board with your backstop, with your plane. Off you go. 
okay where are you Ben is that two is that okay that's better all right so you can see how that will locate fix on the board nicely so if you've got an MFT style top or your workstation with all your path holes in you can quickly put it on and off the bench and know it's secure if you've got your dogs for that you can even go to where we're heading now a mitre fence you could have longer ones or as a standard add-on accessory you get the two short dogs that will fit in go to there now do about my orange board slips on top of my workbench I'm just going to bring it back over again so your mitres we've got that cleaner and just checking our position on the camera for you guys right there that's good you want to cut a mitre have you ever tried by hand Ah, oh, nothing more infuriating, right? Ben, just leave me there, mate. Let's bring us in. I've got a piece of oak on here. Not only have I got a piece of oak, I've got a piece of oak with a couple of mouldings. Okay. And um, five, we sharpened it down there. Just going to come in back a little bit, then going forward. Check we're clean there. So, with my five, and this is a tiny bit, how do you take a smidgen or a tad? Off a hand cut mitre. When you've done it on the mitre, so you just want that, that little bit. Easy, huh? So, but you've got the other one to do, the other end. So that's left hand. Well, okay, you turn the board around. You might have to work a little bit ampidextrous now. All right, takes a little bit more thinking about this. I'm not as good this way. Look, I've got to get my hand position right. Harder on the cut there, okay? But you get the idea. You can work right or left hand mitres quick and easy to do that literally drops in and out now i've got in here somewhere there they are slightly different might a bit bigger this has got a molding go down through so to try and cut these takes a bit of effort i'm just going to bring the plane back i'm a bit high on the top that's about where i put things up and down moving things about that's better other thing you've got to remember with this, especially if you're going higher, and we'll go through it in a second. Bring it up. I need to come back a little bit between now on something bigger. That's better. Yeah, this look, this lovely. So we can trim our mitre. Now you need to make sure things are square this way off the board. You have lateral movement on the plane, so you might need to move your blade up or down a little bit on your lateral lever to set it up to get it dead square. So if you're finding off the board upwards is a little bit out, you've got that lateral movement. If you've got too much top or bottom with your blade set, you're not going to give you something dead square. So it's worth playing around with. But I love the fact that I can easily produce... I want something just to sit on. Let's go back to my bit of fly I've got. Okay. Just seeing where we are. Bring you forward, that's better. And we can get two really clean. Just going up to the top here, checking where things are. Nice clean mitres. Okay. Come together beautifully. I can get a cleaner edge than you're going to get off your table saw. Or your mitre saw. Japanese saw, if you like. But you can also trim it back one cut, nice and light. Okay, so Ben, what have you got? Um, so, a question in from Fuller. He's asking, do we stock an accessory handle that will fit on the side of the plane? We're looking at. So, the problem with most things like the number five, you're set to where the handle is here. You could possibly have a handle that comes up. I think Ben probably eh, not bad there actually on the main. Two is not bad. Difficult to have a handle that sits on the top here. Going to make it tricky to control. Finger and thumb is beautiful to grip on a Bailey or Bedrock style plane. Down in there, you grip down your blade, you're touching on the back of the frog onto the cap iron. You're keeping your fingers away from the lateral and your movements, so you're not adjusting things. If you've sharpened it, Wax it, then you glide. Reduce friction helps you with that cut, okay? You shouldn't be needing tons and tons of effort of this, okay? Obviously, wider board. We'll put the board back together as a thing in a sec, okay? 
will take a little bit more effort. I might need to turn the boards there and I can play around with. Okay, let's just throw this back in. Ben, you think you had another question? No? Okay, good. All right. So let's just put that one back, drop one look. So assemble it, making it look hard work now. Try to hold that up. We'll put one on. And underneath, I'll flip it over. So they fit into that T groove in there. You can see you've got, sorry, Ben, nice slot in here. So I put the nut in underneath, which I'm just reaching for now. I'll slacken off the other one. We've got a lot of movement. All right, so you can see that. Again, nice and accurately machined. So I can position that side set, that stop end fence, get it nice and square. I can set it up so it's level. The easiest thing to do that with is a square. A proper one. I'm going to get in trouble now, okay? Um, I won't have a wooden face square. I have to have a traditional engineer's type square. I'm a bit fussy, all right? So, we said to you about wider boards can take more effort. I've got... And it's a nice thin piece of oak. This is... Ooh, you really want but somebody going to say how wide is the chase well if you got ruler up on there isn't there look. so we have a rule we have got ooh, 155 so just over six inch wide you can see it's wide but it's going off my camera angle look. okay bring it back a little bit i can easily do that shoot the end of that panel so i'm going to fit it in Beautiful today. Oh, I'm holding the top finger and thumb. Okay, we did that one. A bit of block plan. Need a bit of cut. A little bit. So I need to just wind things up, finding where they are. Check I'm not clashing on the mail for there. It's better. So we're taking. Shaving cut on there. It doesn't have to be a big heavy plan on this. You could go with your block plan that's nice, lower, a bit more compact. Favorite thing I'd want to use with this if I can something as 62. You can get handles that fit on the side. So you can hold it up on the top. The idea is you're there. Go carefully where your fingers are coming over and hitting that backstop. But this is giant block plan. Then we can work through. I'm concentrating on where I'm going would be better than instead of looking at the camera shots. Okay, but you can see what we're cutting. This is oak. Look at these. Are they beautiful? Nice curly shavings. Um, I know most of you probably want to make something, but look at the shavings. All right? There's a joy out of getting that. I know. When you walk into the kitchen and go, look at the I uh, know my wife doesn't get it either. Okay, call them Ben. So, I've got a question from Fuller. He's like, asking about um, uh, was there a mention of donkey ear, donkey, donkey ear geez. fixture? Which, from memory, Philip is vertical as a mitre, trickier to do on this, and it's something we stalled away from. So, if I'm thinking right, you can actually have. An angle where you can do a mitre on its side, so something deeper. Something we're thinking of, but at the moment it was a case of how complicated do we make this as a standard thing? How many of those features are everyone going to use? It's one of those things I have looked at and have thought about, but we'd actually need to make the board possibly in two parts so it joins and comes up. So you could do, in reality, what you're looking at for the guys that don't know, you can have a long mitre all the way down this edge, clamp it into the board, and you'd be able to plane it to a mitre. Do the other one, they come together to make a box. Possible. But it just makes it more complicated as an idea. Um, the biggest problem with that, the more complicated more you make it, the more expensive it becomes as an item, which is a bit of a shame. You know, there's always that sort of thing of how can we make. So we did look at. Now, we've said about your mitre accessory that drops on. This had a few other purposes. So major thing it will obviously fit in your MFT table if you're using it and your orange board. Let's bring it back up a bit. Look, I'm going to clear a little bit of clutter, move a few planes just out the way and put them back up out the way. I dropped a wooden box on the floor the other week. A plane doesn't fly as well. A couple of mitres down to there. A bit of plywood I want. 
that we want. Square out timber we cut, we'll move just a little bit. Right, okay. So we want board. This will obviously fit in. You can use it with your MFT accessories so you can get a 45 degree angle. Okay, you can move things about. You've got 90 off the other way. So you can use it with your guide rails and your source. Another thing with this, you've always wanted that extra pair of hands. Just trying to see where my board goes together. That into there, I can take the two bungs out. Now, do you think this is made dead square? You can use it as a layout or support square. Now, I'll pull this up and you'll have a look in a minute. I've just got to duck down just so I can clamp this in place I'm using. And I'll show you what I'm using as a clamp. Let's get one on first. Now, we've got a couple of small left clamps. Chewy with this, I've often wondered what this little lip on the top does, which I'll show you a bit more in a minute. Probably if I come over there, Ben, I think you can just see. Right? This has got a step, and I've never figured out what it's for. Does it help support it a little bit? Maybe. But actually, with this, if I bring this up, it works beautifully on here. i we'll look at where we are. That's better. Comes in. The step on there comes in. It limits how far that clamp will come into the groove. So we have now something as a support block. Whilst just assembling that cabinet. I've always had that thing where I could do with an extra pair of hands just to hold it. Well, a couple of clamps and that right angle give you that scope up, makes it easy to construct. Maybe you're gluing it together, but has more than one use. So you can use it with your MFT table or your path system. So you can use your guide rail. But you can also obviously use it as a clamp up and support, which you can see how useful that was. All right, take a clamp off. Amazing. I can't imagine trying to do it by hand. So, dragging something on the bench now. I think one there. So, our shooting board. Right, so we tried to keep it quite basic. End stop, right and left hand. Mitre fence. Most of you are going to do smaller mitres. Want to do something longer? Yeah, a little bit more complicated. Is something we discussed when we looked at this. Maybe we could do an accessory that fitted in, but it's got to go the other way. Gets a little bit trickier, okay? And yes, I, it's something I, I've often sort of, I'd love to have a wider one. But how many times are we going to use it? This as a standard? Oh, yeah. Shoot the end, get things so they come together nicely. Such an important part. That simple thing of that little box under here was a real godsend when you're know, trying to make, and I'd hoped to have the shooting board ready by then, just hasn't materialised. But to shoot things and get them dead square so you can do your nice joints, which is helping get everything square, fits together. Oh, it's beautiful, okay? Most of you, or if we're new to playing we're playing, really struggle on getting the end grain fibres square. Don't dream of actually putting it on the bench and shooting across. Take a minute section off. What more could you want, All right? So, Ben, I think you've done your questions. Hope you're up to there. Hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Something a bit different, I know. Um, something as a new product literally came in this week, all right? So, quite excited about the fact of having something. It's been quite nice for me to play with. We've had test models and everything else, see how it runs, how it slides, a bit of wax, all those little things. I remember saying candle wax. No, no, it builds up as a thing. So you need to go with something, put it on, buff it off, strip of wood. How high? Oh, we can't, okay, we can do things. But you can buy longer bolts, right and left-handed, how you fix it down. All those little things are there, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed. We will see you again next week. We'll do a bit more with, with Working Wisdom. Thank you all. Bye then.